When I've looked at reincarnation, the evidence for it is very, very compelling. It's very, very, very solid. When you, you look at the totality of it and all the experiences that people have had. So then I, again, following the clues, which have become just part of my life in the last 32 years, I started questioning what the spirit world was. Because I, I read a lot about people who had been regressed through hypnosis, etc., by various psychiatrists, therapists, back to what they call the between life state. In other words, between experiences in this reality. And I started reading what people were saying and the common themes were very, very compelling. And when I was reading these things, I was thinking, but that's a hierarchical prison as well. People were, were talking about, oh yeah, well then, then I have to go in front of elders to discuss my last life. And then I have to go to this kind of school to learn more about this, that and the other. And you're going, what? We are consciousness. We are all that is, has been and ever can be. We are spirit, eternal spirit, connected to all spirit. We are ultimately all that is, has been and ever can be. What's all this about? And then I looked at reincarnation again, and I looked at the, the basic story of it, which we're asked to accept if you believe in it. I certainly do. But hold on. If you take the, the size of the universe as projected by mainstream science, compared with that, planet Earth is the equivalent of a billionth of a pinhead. So you're telling me that you have to keep coming back onto this billionth of a pinhead to learn lessons so that you can reach a state of enlightenment which allows you not to have to do that anymore. Well, that makes no sense to me, I'm sorry. What was all infinity to explore and you've got to do this on a billionth of a pinhead? What? So that made no sense. But on the same time, reincarnation from the evidence that I've you know, looked at over many, many years does make sense that it's happening. So if I put reincarnation into another context, what if this level of the simulation is not the only level of the simulation? What if when you leave the body, if you leave it in a certain vibrational state, you're still in the simulation, you're just in other levels of it. And so what's happening is that soul's consciousness is being recycled in and out of this reality over and over again. And basically, one of the things that it's doing through all the emotional trauma, upset, and what have you that comes from that, and the way this world is structured, is that you're giving off low vibrational emotion and thought all the time Depression, fear, the big one, anxiety, all these lower vibration emotions, resentment, hatred. And what do those emotions resonate to in frequency terms? I say to the lower levels of the astral, because basically to, to, to a very large extent, not absolutely in totality, but to a very, very large extent, if you can't see it, it's the fourth dimension or the lower fourth dimension. So you can feel emotion and you can sense thought and you can feel vibes coming off other people, but you can't see them. You can see the effect of them, but you can't see them. And what that's doing is feeding energy into this lower astral, which is the, the, the realm of that which is ultimately manipulating the world of the scene, the human world, via people like Schwab and Gates and all these other people. When you look at this global cult, this secret society network, it is serving the interests of this lower astral, lower fourth dimensional force 
And we, by the effect of that manipulation, are feeding, empowering with our energy, that lower astral force, which obviously brings back the image of Morpheus in the Matrix holding up the battery and saying the machines have turned humans into one of these. And people remember that first Matrix movie where you see the babies and the energy that's being generated by the, the babies is feeding the machines, it's empowering the machines. It's symbolically exactly what's going on. And there's an, a very old esoteric concept, which you can find in symbolized in other ways in different cultures, of what's called the ring pass knot, which is perceived as an energetic barrier beyond which you cannot pass unless you are in a certain high vibrational state, which comes from your perceptual state, which comes from your self-identity state. And it's interesting that in the official story of reincarnation, you have to keep reincarnating to, quote, learn lessons, to reach a state of enlightenment, a state of frequency, which allows you to break the cycle of reincarnation. And the point being that how can you learn lessons if you keep coming back into this realm with the memory of the lessons you've already learned wiped? So you're basically starting with a blank sheet of paper. I mean, you, you can be influenced from the subconscious by previous lives, yes, and previous experiences, but you don't overwhelmingly consciously know what has happened and what you've learned. So you're starting with a blank sheet of paper. So what do you mean learning lessons? And there was a, a situation I experienced in 2003 when for the only time I took ayahuasca, the rainforest plant, the psychoactive drug in a rainforest in Brazil. And uh, for five hours one night, a very clear, took a female form, voice, gave me chapter and verse on the fact that this, is a, this whole reality we're experiencing is, is an illusion. And at one point, I was shown this field in the countryside and there was a, a path, a mud path going across it. And then suddenly people started falling out of the sky as I was watching this and they were all falling onto the path and they were all walking along the path and more and more came, and more and more came and eventually they started wearing the path away and the path started getting deeper and then it morphed into a a record groove in one of the old Ryan vinyl records and people were walking through this groove. It was dark, they couldn't see anything. And the implication of that, of the what the voice said when that picture was being shown to me, is that souls, consciousness, are coming in through reincarnation, already pre-programmed from previous programming. And they lock into the program and so far, from reaching a point of enlightenment so that you can break out of the cycle, the vast majority are going deeper and deeper into the cycle because of the effects on them in terms of self-identity and perception of this constant experience of this world in its different forms. And for me, you know, I've been saying this all the way through. The answer is still the same. We are entrapped in terms of frequency, vibration, within this trap of reincarnation and this reality, this simulation, because we are manipulated not to reach a state of awareness, thus frequency, that allows us to get out of it. And so the answer is always the same, self-identity. You are not your body. That's an expression of the simulation. You are locked by the simulation into the simulation. It's through the body. We're reaching the point now where more and more people are starting to realize, remember who and what they are. And as they do so, as you expand your self-identity from I'm Ethel on the checkout to I'm all that is, has been, and ever can be, 
having a brief experience called human, as that expansion of self-identity happens, so that expansion of frequency happens. And if you leave the body in a state of self-awareness of true I, then you're out of here. You're out of the trap. That's the big, big, big revelation that this cult and its non-human fourth dimensional astral masters don't want us to know.